Welcome to the world today. I'm Vikas Majid Khan. Today we're talking about the most important issue facing Pakistan and in fact the entire region and that is water scarcity. So we'll be talking about that in a lot of detail. Uh, yesterday also we spoke about the importance of uh, tackling this issue on war footing. It is uh, extremely important. It is imperative that we start working on this issue uh, as of yesterday. And if we were too late for that, then now is the time to start working on this issue on war footing. And our second topic, uh, if we have the time, we will be talking about the uh, Pakistan and India agreement to restore the line of control ceasefire, a very rare and positive development in Pakistan-India relations. So we'll see if we can have time to talk about that as well. Let me introduce my guests in the studio joining me for the conversation today. We've, we've been joined by, first of all, uh, Shaquille Ravesab from the SDPI. And joining him, we have Dr. Parveen Ashraf. She's with the Potohar Organization for Development Advocacy. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Ramsab, I'll start with you. Uh, we are not, no longer inching towards a catastrophe uh, when it comes to water conservation. In fact, it seems that we're already there and we need to start uh, making very serious uh, decisions and then implementing those decisions and uh, securing our future generations' water supplies. What are your views on this, sir? The thing is, as you said in your introduction, we must start yesterday. So I will say like not yesterday, before the yesterday. The problem is in this country, we are talking about the gravity of the situation, but we are not talking about the real bottlenecks to who is creating the problem. The real problem is not the government, the real problem is the political parties. In respect of their government in power, all political parties, they are creating the fuss around it. Nobody is talking about the scientific data and evidence. Everybody is talking about on the constituency in which they are operating. For example, in the most recent day, it is told us that there will be 50% less water available. But Sindh is blaming Punjab. So if you look at in the Punjab context, the southern Punjab is also complaining. Balochistan, which is a low riparian to Sindh, they are also complaining. But we talk about the low riparian, but not, nobody talk about the Balochistan. And if you talk about the dams, you have different types of the uh, arguments by political parties. But nobody is telling you that uh, we, the total allocated water of Pakistan, we receive 84% of that water in three months' time. In three months' time. The rest of year we have the 16%. If I explain this example like that, I am told like that I have 100 uh, rupees of salary for a year, and though uh, from that I will receive 84 rupees in three months. Rest of the nine months I have to survive on the 16. What I will do? I will try to save the money from the 84. Not say like that we spend like that and rest of the years or uh, months I will be starving. So this is the case with the Pakistan. So we don't, uh, we have received, uh, we receive 84% water in three months of the summer due to the glacier melt, due to the monsoon, but we don't store that water. We don't build the dam. And if there is a one, uh, just to put example, one example from the cow tree. They talk about the down the cow tree, sometimes there is no water available. But actually, if you go to the scientific evidence, every year on average, it needs 8.7 MAF, every year. What we are giving to the cow tree? We are given 31 MAF. That means we are wasting almost 23 MAF. Right. Still, Kotri is facing the problem. Why? Because when there is a flood, a monsoon season, or a glacier melt in three months, we give all the water. The rest of the year, we are facing the problem. Yes. One thing is second thing. Then we need water for our agriculture. We don't have the water. Then we go for the tubules. Every year, Pakistan extracts 54 MAF water, ground water. That is creating a serious, serious problem for the salinity of, the, of our uh, land and they create a serious problem for the agriculture and watershed. Water table is going down. Even you can observe in there in Islamabad. Yes. So water table is going down. Across the country. Across the country. And not only that, but the aquifers have also been polluted. We have one of the most highest uh, percentage of arsenic in our groundwater. No, that is the, the, the thing, thing is the, that study was conducted in only the, the, on those areas where the naturally in the morphology of that land, the arsenic is high. The sample was not representative of the Pakistan. Okay. So that's we cannot tell like that. But still water quality is a big issue. Uh, we're not talking about on the arsenic, but other areas there, the water quality is a big issue. Right. 27 million people almost, they don't have the safe water uh, access. Right. The thing is that on one end, we are wasting our water to sea. On other end, we are extracting water from the groundwater. We are creating problem on the both side. I, I just uh, recently wrote an article where I uh, cal try to calculate the total cost. From 1980 to 2016, Pakistan almost wasted a 200 billion uh, uh, worth of water. Right. 
So that is the cost we are facing. This does not include the indirect cost. Well, I'm going to come to this question of where should we place the responsibility. You have identified political parties, political but, parties but it can't be just them because there are other. They are. They are one of the the, the culprits. We come back. I will explain. We, we will come to that later. I want to bring uh, uh, Dr. Praveen into the conversation. Dr. Praveen, uh, we also have climate change, which yeah. is exacerbating the the water issue. Uh, we have reports coming from. Uh, Nepal, where the Himalayan mo mountains are supposed to be clad in snow yeah. all throughout the year, and now they are, you can see the bare rocks in, in those areas. So, ma'am, uh, not only that, uh, I've, whenever, every time I've been w coming to work uh, for the past week, I've been observing uh, that there have been thick uh, columns of smoke rising right, from the yeah. margalas. And I don't understand that under the circumstances that we are living in, how is it possible that there are every single day huge thick plumes of smoke emerging from the Margala Mountains? That means serious amount of wood is being burnt. What yes. is happening? What kind of environmental exactly. degradation are we going mm. into? How can we stop this? You know, it's such a complex issue as uh, Shakil Rame uh, uh, was, uh, he talked about it that as you talk about uh, the, uh, the ice, you know, the snow, the level of snow is uh, depleting as the water uh, fall is. If you see overall in Islamabad, the uh, quantity of water is very less. And the water, f uh, the, the, this rainfall uh, in the uh, rainfall that you see, season is changing. You know, the climate is changing. There are unforeseen, unforecasted uh, rains. Similarly, there are unforecasted uh, uh, snow dry fall, spells but it's very less the quantity is less the amount is less so this one way because of the global warming we uh, call it and then if you go to northern part of Pakistan glaciers are melting glaciers are melting along with eroding the land the fertile land uh, and bringing all that to the um, south part of the Pakistan and uh, here, that uh, all that uh, land comes and water comes and that ruins your lands, you know, your crops and all that. On one side, there is depletion of water. And apart from that, uh, there are uh, such as the groundwater is uh, depleting water. And similarly, in those part of where semi-arid or arid lands and in the mountains, like in Kashmir and in Gilgit Baltistan, where water is not under the ground, there are belts of water flow. So that are also, and the channels, the natural uh, flows and channels were there, they are changing their pathway. And its water is depleting there also. On one side, there is floods, and there is, um, and on the other side, there is snowfall that is uh, depleting because of the global uh, warming. On the secondly, because we did not take major, uh, major uh, measures that should have been to control the climate and uh, the water pollution through this uh, other uh, industrial uh, pollution, and we have not done anything. Major steps are not taken. The industrial area is here, but you see that early in the morning when you go to the office, there's huge smokes. You see it, and there was nothing is taken. You know, this is Islamabad where the hub of power is there. And as you very rightly said that for last few days you can see uh, there is so much smoke in the Margala Hills. And if Islamabad that is just, uh, you know, in front of, just in the, it's the mirror side of your uh, government's response. Now what is the Environment and, Ministry doing about it, Ji? Environment Ministry, um, not only Ministry, you know, it's the Climate Change Ministry, there is another ministry that is there. And uh, they are, CDA has the responsibility also. CDA has the, if, CDA must take some uh, steps and they should have, they should be equipped with the technology to stop all this uh, fire in the wood, but they are not doing anything here because um, it's just the uh, blaming each other, not taking responsibility on ourselves, everyone at the uh, domestic level. If you see this um, uh, Bari Maam and all these nalas were there, they were the clean water streams actually. Mm -hmm. But because of the pollution, because of our domestic pollution, because of our other pollutions, we have not looked after all these things, never planned before. We have made them all sewerage water, converted all these 
stream, uh, clean stream water into, convert, uh, into the sewerage water. So all these issues are there. However, uh, this uh, National Agriculture Council has done uh, remarkable uh, work. Uh, they have converted these uh, nalas into clean re to reclaim all this water, uh, sewerage water for the irrigation purposes that they are doing. And for uh, rain, rain water also, on the major scale at national level, they must have done uh, the own KKH itself, you know. You can build 4,000 uh, smaller dams without eroding huge uh, lanes, you know. And uh, similarly, like uh, between Basha and uh, uh, Diyamar yeah. Dam, the issue is there that who wants to pull it back, you know. Like uh, if KPK is more in power and in administration, they will drag it to there. It's just this, uh, the fairness, lack of fairness, lack of vision, and lack of vigilance, I would say, that they're not building dams. They would, have, uh, uh, they would have saved so much of the water and rain water, you know, they could have made uh, smaller dams and could have taught at the village level also. If you go to China, you will see in the Beijing, just 50 kilometers away from Beijing in Huairo, you see huge uh, reservoirs people have constructed and governments have constructed to reserve the water, rain water, and to reclaim it. And you have different levels. In uh, Gilgit, there was a project in Hunza uh, about uh, the, uh, to reclaim this sewerage water for the irrigation purposes. So you have so much water that, as Shakil uh, told uh, us, that uh, it is best because we don't plan to make reservoirs. You see, uh, the thing is what you have uh, pointed out, ma'am, there's also a responsibility that the citizens of the, the country, every single Pakistani has a responsibility yes. to play their part. But unfortunately, we see that they are playing the opposite role. They are the ones who are polluting our freshwater uh, resources, our streams, as you mentioned. Uh, how can we get from uh, you know, that, that uh, understanding of every individual citizen to understand how uh, they play a part in, uh, in saving the country's resources? That is missing completely, uh, Rame Saab, from the discourse. Don't you think that it is important that uh, we need to make uh, it an uh, it, make it a part of our awareness campaign that every single individual must f uh, take the responsibility of not just preserving the water, but also uh, helping our future generations in, in utilizing that water effectively. Uh, in your opinion, sir, what can be done in, in, in this sort of uh, respect? Absolutely, I agree with you. So individual responsibility is very important. If I talk about from the religious point of view, as it has been said, if you are sitting at the bank of a river, and but you see, we can't blame the, the individual because the in individual ha is completely clueless. The individuals so have I'm, no knowledge. So they they do I'm not understand what so they are doing. So, that's so what then I'm what saying. is the problem? Then how so do we address this I'm issue? The problem is also individual. So the problem is two types. So we need two types fix. One is individual. So how they waste, we have to tell them. If, if For example, just give you an example. We always say like that we waste our water on a... 10 gallon uh, per day on washing, we do waste of water on uh, cleaning a car on uh, 15 gallon like that. We say like that. But the thing is, if individuals are not complying, the role of states come here. For example, I'll give you an example from the Santa Fe in the USA. They allocate need-based water to everybody. After that need, you have to pay heavily. For example, for my need to wash myself, to drink, to do other uh, things at the home. They calculate that is needed. They will give you free of cost. But after that, you have to charge it. So then the, you can make these individuals accountable. Individuals they also take behavior from the state actions. For example, when it comes to store the water, it's the duty of the state to, to, to build a dams or reservoirs. Yes, uh, we, we need to talk about that as well. Uh, and uh, one, that's very important. Footnote, right? so, adding a footnote to Shaquille's uh, uh, conversation, that uh, in, in terms of personal or individual role, you know, again, right from the uh, academic level, now they are doing researches. Like even at the domestic level, if we te teach them or the communities are made responsible. Previously, people used to uh, arrange their own uh, uh, city or in their at the village level, they would make everything by themselves. Since in the name of democracy, we have not brought democracy, but what we have done that 
at the same time, we have taken the self-responsibility away from them. So people are not set responsible because of this uh, lack of laws, lack of uh, knowledge, and lack of technology. And other Absolutely. Thing, other <coughs> thing I want to, you were talking about the individuals. You know, in Islamabad, it's a prohibited to have a groundwater pumps at the home level. And you tell me ki what class is living here in Islamabad, the most educated? the most aware class, yeah. still they are installing. So it's a state which you have to take the action now. So when I am saying like that, give a state, state is, for example, you are talking about the fire in and the Margla Hills. So it's a responsibility of the state. Absolutely. And uh, the thing is, every <coughs> other day you see, the, as you are mentioning, every other day you see the fire. Rami sahab, uh, sorry, uh, Rami sahab, the 90% uh, of our fresh water is used in agriculture. 60% of the population is dependent on agriculture. We uh, need to sp really carefully plan our agriculture. It is the most, I mean, food security is extremely important for a country. Now, when we see the way water is depleting and the population is expanding exponentially, the water uh, is going down, population is increasing, what kind of effects is that going to have on our society? You know, in our irrigation system, our, our, uh, the efficiency of irrigation yeah, system the, the is... The flood system that we copy is no. also uh, a most uh, wasteful, wasteful. Uh, I, process of irrigation. I'm coming back to that point, but before that, our irrigation efficiency is 35 to 45 percent. Yes. So that is one of the lowest yes, irrigation absolutely. efficiency. Yes. I'm talking about convenience of the water. I'm not talking about the flooding and the number of the watering. Yes, and as a crops. result of that wasting water, we so still, our yields are one of the lowest so in the world. So th th that is the lowest uh, efficiency then. We, uh, our farmers are not aware how much water is required. They are just saying like that, as much water we give to the crop, we will get the more uh, output. No, that is not the case. Every crop requires a certain number of watering. So. Above that watering, it will not increase the yield. Or maybe it can affect the uh, inactivity, but it will not increase the yield. Yes. So we have to tell them, if you need a two watering for the wheat, you have to stick to the two, not the three, four, five. Right. So there are the problems which are uh, the both sides. I, mean, I am agreeing with you on the individual side, there's a problem, and there's a problem on the state level. We yes. are not educating them. So we have to educate the farmer by sub. Listen, if there, if there is needed only the two watering, yeah. we will give you a two watering at the lowest cost. But if you go for the third one, we will charge you very high. So these are the systematic changes we have to bring in. Right. And again, I just want to highlight one thing apart from that. Please. You're talking about the margla. Margla is very important. Every day, as you were mentioning, there is a fire here and there. We have CDA. We have the city, metropolitan government. We have a full dedicated ministry. Full dedicated ministry. And still we are saying, uh, looking at these lacunas. So there is something wrong we have to ponder. What is the wrong? When you were saying me like that, the issue, what is, is the issue is the pl pol political parties. You're the expert, so you have to tell me what is wrong. <laughs> so I would agree so to disagree. Yeah, yes, because please. Because not only political parties, you know, yeah, you are right. That just look at the systems we have, political system. How mature and how older is your political democratic system, truly speaking? You know, yes, ma'am. Most of the time you are ruled by military. We'll, we'll talk about that later, ma'am. If uh, a 16-year-old right uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Moment. We've been joined by uh, Dr. Zegam Habib on the, on the line, so let's uh, first talk to her. Thank you very much, Dr. Zegam, for joining us. Uh, we're talking about the water woes and water issues of Pakistan. Uh, what, has the, uh, uh, what has your department done in terms of uh, improving water availability and uh, constructing water reservoirs in the country in the coming days and weeks? My department, I'm an independent consultant. Okay. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we're listening. Yeah, yeah. I'm an independent consultant. I think the, the first problem is I have not uh, listened to you. But the first problem is, as I have said many times, that we don't identify the issues properly. Now the water scarcity, there's two things happening in Pakistan at this moment. And the uh, first thing is the water flow in all rivers are decreased. Two days back, it has said the water in uh, Indus River is only 10,000 cases in flow, which was supposed to be more than 100,000 cases. In the end of, uh, in the beginning of uh, May, they said it's 41,000. Last year, it was 145,000. So the one very important thing is that we have drastic decrease in river inflows in Pakistan. So something happening in the catchment, which we don't know. This is not about building dams only. That is also important. But the first thing is we don't know what's happening in the catchment. 
inside Pakistan, outside Pakistan. And I think there's a very clear indication that what India is doing that is also making a big impact now. Because in winter, this year, flow was only 50 to 60 percent of the last 22 year average. So we mm. have decreased in base flow. We have decreased in uh, flow which should come from the glacier melt, and we have decreased in uh, rainwater uh, inflow. Most of our departments are uh, doing something uh, totally rubbish. For example, the uh, climate change related department, including uh, Pakistan Met Office and GCIS. I am giving these names because they are, they are saying in recent years that the water is increasing and rainfall is increasing. So it's not increasing, it's decreasing. That's the one thing. It's very, very important that we must know what is the problem. The now, second thing, how to manage it. I think the main issue is not the lining and all those things. The main issue is to manage the demand especially early summer. Now, last few years, if you look at the crisis in the beginning of the summer, we have more demand in the beginning of the summer than the, than the supply. So we, we have more water use in agriculture, so we have to change the cropping pattern, especially beginning of the, the, the crops which need very, uh, you know, high water, for example, sugar cane, for example, rice, for example, even cotton in some of the area. We can't afford anymore. Because now farmers, I'm working in Sin, the rural areas uh, on the water sector, and uh, they are, many uh, small farmers are going to be bankrupt because of this uh, shortage of water. So we need to manage the demand. And we need to, each province need to know how much water they are going to get. They know it uh, principally. And then they keep their demand inside that availability. I think this is not the issue of water port line. Right. Or some other things like that. So, yeah, we need a reservoir because I, it's very, uh, you know, if you, if you see the weather pattern at the moment, we are going high probability that we are going to have floods this year. Right. Because the glacier melt and rainfall start in the coming months, coming weeks. So Absolutely. then we will have another disaster because of the flood. It seems like that, ma'am. Thank you so much for taking out the time and sharing your views with PTV World. We hope that uh, your comments uh, have uh, reached the right quarters because it's very important that we realize the importance of this of this uh, calamity which is yeah. waiting in the wings to happen. Uh, Ramesh, so, you know, just, uh, so just to add uh, into the conversation that uh, glaciers, if you go to, uh, towards this across the KKH, in northern areas in uh, you know you could see glaciers a couple of years back just across just near very near to your uh, kkh the main road and today when you see the, the glaciers have moved back right not only there ma'am but the across the world up. even at yeah, the poles so at the like north pole and the south and pole the glaciers yeah, have completely yeah. uh, melted and the sea water is also uh, set to rise in fact it is rising and yeah. uh, many coastal cities are going to be wiped yeah. off the uh, of the surface so this is the kind of situation that we are heading towards. Uh, Ramesh, the question is that uh, in 2010, uh, a water management uh, expert associated with the Punjab Irrigation Department said that our annual water availability was 1,000 cubic uh, meters per person. Uh, and in 2017 today, it is less than 850 cubic meters per capita fresh water around. So uh, where has that water disappeared, sir? And the, the, it's a one thing is population, okay, the, the population is increasing because if you calculate per capita, that is a population number. Right. So because in a 2010, we did not have a census, we were just using the imaginary yeah. figures, but now you have the exact number of people who are there. So one thing is that. The other thing is per capita availability and the problem is in there are, I think, 84 countries in the world, they have the less than 800 cubic meter available, but they having the best management system. So we don't have the management and the governance system. Because what you can talk about the management and governance, if you waste in a one spell of the time all your water, the rest of thing is a story you can talk about anything. Because right. you don't have something managed. For example, if you don't have car to drive, what is the fun to talk about the yeah. skills of driving? Right. So the thing is you have, must have the water. Issue we have at this part of time, so we have the reservoirs or the dams which are catering 
the you know, water coming from glaciers, the water coming from the monsoons, we don't have the reservoirs and dams. That's mean from the monsoons, we are completely wasting our time. Right. Oh, sorry, our water. So we need to build also yeah, reservoirs yeah. and dams, which also take care of water from uh, their uh, the rain monsoon. Water, yeah. So the monsoon season and the, from other rain seasons. Ravi sir, also, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can you also shed some light on the fact that why is it that in the last 60 years, we have not built a single years. water reservoir, not one? And so the thing is, this is, again, I'm saying it's a political party. So if I can quote you an example. In 1960s, when Ayub Khan went to USA, he requested World Bank uh, president, please make an analysis for a water management in Pakistan. We identified the, we cannot delay the next dam after Tribal and Mangla in the beginning of the 90s. We must have to build the Kalabakh Dam in the beginning of the 90s. That is a report by the World Bank. The experts, they yeah, engage yeah. all over the world. So one thing, and second, they said, uh, after that, every 10 years, we must have one more dam. Absolutely. So, but we even, we did not build a Kalabakh Dam. A Kalabakh controversy is very interesting. I'm not taking side from anybody, but very interesting. Who started it? In general, in general Zia uh, the regime, their governor, KPK, governor, that NWFP, he started it. Everybody hates this, uh, this type of, uh, you can say, dictatorship, but the political party was carrying the legacies of the dictatorship. So that thing is mainly, mainly happened, which is haunting Pakistan. So the political parties, they are not taking the ownership of the issue because the political party are the leaders of the people who have to make the strategic decisions, the vi decision with the vision. Not the vision, the, the decision with the vision of the people or the, the, for the pity politics. They are trying to play on this issue to get the vote. But they are not understanding, they are losing cumulatively. Because everybody will be at the loss. If there yes. will be no water, so for example, if Punjab does not have water, so from where you How will get the food? Yeah. From where you will get the food? Already there are 58.8% percent population. Yeah, of may I ask you, uh, uh, Rame Saab, and uh, madam, if you also have any knowledge about this issue, uh, what is the real problem with constructing Kalabagh Dam? Why are the people against construction of Kalabagh Dam? We've heard reports that it's because they feel that some of the most prime agricultural land will come underwater and it will all be wasted. Is that one of the reasons? No, but that's uh, no, for me. For if I uh, when I'm working on that, so it's uh, one of the things the Nushara controversy. Right. So, but that is not true according to the statistics. No, but my, my question is that you could have the most fertile land on the planet. And if you do not have that's any water, I mean, the, the, then how can you grow anything in that? No, that's what I'm saying. So that is a one of the Nashera controversy. So yeah. the K ANP is taking like that. So it will be submerged. But it is a many feet above than the Kalabag Dam. It can be submerged. But the fact of the matter is that if we build that dam, then we can irrigate far more area than is going to come to that underneath area. that. First time we are talking about the controversies. That is one controversy. Then Sindh is saying like that the Punjab will divert the water. So the thing is, Punjab is offering, or other federal government is offering, let's put the telemetry system. You can measure every yeah, drop of true. water where it is going. One thing. And second thing, we are wasting water. Because I'll just give you one example from Deamir Basha, from the, the Deamir the, the Dam. Yeah. Due to Deamir construction, apart from the electricity generation and other things, 700,000 acres will come under cultivation. If you talk about 700,000 acres, Hector, sorry, hectares. That's mean how many jobs you will create. How Absolutely. Much, oh, how much food you will be create, Absolutely. Uh, reproduce. How much raw material for the textile you will be produce. The thing is there's a multiplier uh, uh, benefits. But the problem is there's a pity politics of the political parties. That's yeah. their handling. One thing and second thing. We, are, we can also identify other places where we can build the dams. Right. Kalabagh Dam is not the end of the world. Right. The, but the thing is that we must have to make a decision on the basis of national interest, not on the basis of which of some political parties or some uh, other interest group in this country. I have a, another technical yeah, question you know, for you. Just I will yes, add one thing please. that very truly why don't we make planning according to evidence-based uh, realities, right. scientific realities, you yes, know. Yes, if scientific realities are brought before the public and before the uh, scientific uh, population, uh, policy makers, why would they refrain from it? As we don't know, ma'am, because that, we've, we've seen know, like, that in the no, last 60 years are, are, you know, like it's a tug are of there war, for you to see. Political tug of war between the provinces and between the politicians uh, of different provinces. So it's, they should stop playing this tug of war and they should think of the country. And as uh, Rame Saab said that it's not the end of the world. Why don't you make reservoirs, smaller reservoirs to, stop, to collect this uh, rainwater? 
you can save rainwater and then you can use that also. And then across the KKH, not only this Diamar uh, uh, Dam, but apart from Diamar Dam, there are smaller dams. Almost 4,000 dams were, when I was a member of the Gilgit Baltistan Legislative Assembly, there was a survey and there was a feasibility report was prepared that there will be 4,000 dams will be constructed at different uh, parts of Gilgit Baltistan on different uh, rivers. And uh, we heard that so much had been done, feasibility report was ready and it was discussed. And then, I don't know, suddenly government changes and the policy, the continuation of policy and carrying, uh, carrying on the policy of the previous government ethically by thinking that this is the need of the country, not of the politicians, not of the governments themselves. Right. Every day, every day. Sorry. Again, the accountability every day, matters. I pray for the new provinces. Although I am from Central Punjab, but I be, I am praying for the Southern Punjab. Why? Because that will be the point where there will be a redistribution of water will happen, and there will be creation of new provinces. Maybe you know the no people are yeah. so much aware. Maybe some scientific debate will start at there. Well, here's a, a an idea for a scientific solution to uh, the problem of not just climate change but water which is more important. Uh, we have uh, a number of desalination plants on the Arabian Sea that are not working. They are just lying like uh, uh, destroyed uh, machinery just planted on the on the seafront. Uh, do you think Ramesab that we can create a system in which we can take seawater and pump it all the way up to the north and then have a recirculatory system going on so that the water can be pumped up the country and then flow back and fill up aquifers. Is that possible? If you can no, bring I don't gas... I don't believe in that. So that will be, a, I think, a feasible and a possibility. Why not? You can desalinize, but on the limited scale. On the limited scale, one thing. And second thing, so you are putting so much efforts on something which is far more costly, but you are not giving any focus what is available at your, in your pocket. Right. It's a, like that. I need... Uh, for example, I am an unemployed person. What I need? I need a luxury car or a source of income. Right. I need a source of income. But the luxury car maybe can be a source of income, but I have to start somewhere. So the point is we need to be focused what is done. Don't have to run after the dreams like that. That can be done. Guess what is available? Either we are managing, governing, or benefiting from it. Hmm. If you are giving them like these solutions, you are giving them excuses to delay more further. Right. Because they say, oh, that technology we are yeah. looking forward, that technology we are looking forward, there will be no dispute. No, but we've seen what they've so done with the technology. The technology yeah. is lying idle on the seafront. You they're, are right. They're not doing so anything the thing with is, it. The thing is, the uh, desalination cost. You know what will be the cost of a small bottle of water? Well, 50 rupees. That we are getting. That, that we are getting right now, the 30 rupees. 30 the rupees. cost of that the bottle would be 250 rupees. Uh, where are you buying that water, sir, which is for 30 rupees in a plastic bottle, which no. is also very bad for your health, so this by is the way. Bad. These are bad. Now, what I'm saying, so from one side, you're 30, other are 250. The thing is, the things you can do immediately, and you, which are the multiple, because desalination plant, can you do the agriculture? Can yeah, you produce uh, a bar of food? Uh, uh, Ramesab, this is a, a, a very uh, a broad academic debate. And unfortunately, we don't really have the time uh, to talk about this in detail. But we will be doing this in subsequent programs because this issue is not going away. And we will be talking about this uh, from time to time. Thank you very much for taking out the time and uh, sharing your views with PTV World. Well, you heard the conversation. And it is a dire situation for Pakistan and the region when it comes to uh, water. We need to conserve water. We need to create uh, reservoirs for our uh, future generations. Uh, but on a positive note, uh, we have uh, the Indian and Pakistani DGMOs uh, establishing contact on the hotline and now saying that uh, they want to uh, calm down the, uh, the uh, violence on the LOC. Both the DGMOs agreed to fully implement the ceasefire understanding of the 2003 in their letter and spirit, and the ceasefire will not be violated from either side. We hope that that is the case, but uh, we have suffered a lot as a result of unprovoked Indian firing on the LOC. More than uh, 100 people have lost their lives, and we hope that this will end, and Indian and Pakistanis will be able to uh, understand that the only way forward for both these countries is to cooperate and get over their enmity and solve their long-standing issues through dialogue. With that hope and on that note, it's goodbye.